Originally, this video was more cut up and explanatory, but after resetting it for the 10th time, I decided to go for a more free flow approach. The entire run will be in the background of my dialogue for the entire video, uncut. If you like or dislike this editing style, let me know down in the comments below. Regardless, I hope you enjoy. Hey guys, welcome to the magnificent world of RLCraft speedruns. Unlike vanilla Minecraft where you have no choice but to enter the nether, in RLCraft there are ways to get everything you could ever need in various overworld structures. Blaze powder, ender pearls, XP for gearing, as well as the gear itself can all be found within them. For those of you who do not know what beating RLCraft entails, it requires you not only to defeat the ender dragon, but also Amalgalich, Asmodeus, and Rahobart, which are all powerful entities that make the Ender Dragon look like a trumpet skeleton in comparison. Also, needless to say, you have to be in survival or hardcore mode for the run to count, and peaceful difficulty will not allow enemies to spawn, so that's ruled out as well. How fast could you conceivably beat the mod pack RLCraft playing normally though? Right now the record is just over 2 hours, but in truth it can be done much faster. The hardest mainstream mod pack in the world can potentially be beaten by an average speedrunner in its entirety in 43 minutes. Now let me explain how this could even happen. In this case I am using myself as the lab rat. I am not quite the fastest person on the planet with crafting and the like, but I am not too slow, and it's not like I could just ask Dream for some help. During the run, I try to play as if I do not know what is going to happen next. I only go where most convenient and in line of sight, and I craft things only as I feel the need to, just like I would in a normal run. I did this as an attempt to make the run seem more natural, and the run you are watching in the sec is the second attempt I ever made. In my first attempt, I was defeated by the Lunar Groove final boss of the Lycanite dungeon. The run would be even faster, of course, if it was all planned ahead of time, and I knew exactly where to dig straight down, but then it would not be a normal speedrun, instead it would be a scammer's run, as some like to call it. The run is already scuffed enough since I handcrafted the seed and thought about the scenario ahead of time, so I thought I might as well try to add a bit of natural flow by not planning my steps ahead of time. Now, first I will explain the setting I set it for the fastest start imaginable for an RLCraft speedrun. And remember, I set this all up in creative mode for fun, to push the limits of the mod pack and to see the possibilities. I spawned at the foot of a Shavaxi monument in a frozen ocean biome that is right next to an ice city as you've already seen. In my run, I had to use a desert biome as a replacement for the frozen ocean biome, and a mesa as a replacement for a jungle biome as handcrafting a biome would be very difficult. I also did not know how to spawn in an entire ecosystem, if it is even possible with commands. I did not want to handcraft entire biomes just for the scenario to be criticized regardless. Within sight of spawn, there will be a village with a library, wood depository, and a plains camp. Within sight of the village, there will be a teal lycanite dungeon, and a 12i end stronghold will be visibly fused to the bottom of the Lycanite dungeon when you clear it. The last requirement is that a Sanctuary of Admies or Palace of Erevith is generated within a 10 second flight of your Shavaxi monument, and either of these structures would have the same spawn chance of occurring. And the last requirement would be a top tier battle tower would need to be generated right next to your Palace of Erevith or Sanctuary of Admies. Now, that is a lot of structural requirements, but everything I described is within the realm of possibility. If you think a 12i ender portal is a bit too much to ask for though, a cult island for ender pearls and a witch dungeon generated inside your end stronghold for blaze powder calls for a run that is only 105 seconds slower from testing, and that coincidence is still a whopping 1 in 48 million chance of occurring. The end stronghold having 12 eyes in it is indeed a crazy 1 in 1 trillion, but the 12 eye end stronghold route indeed holds the fastest run possible, so we're going to have to include that. Now with all of these structural occurrences, you have everything you need to beat the game for a max speed speedrun. However, you will need all these structures as well as top tier luck if you want the fastest time possible. You will want your two white shirted villagers found within your library to be selling supreme sharpness, swifter slashes, and advanced protection. 
you will also want an Envenom 3, Viper 5, and Natural Blocking 3 book to be found in the Village Library chests. You will also need to obtain 14 Obsidian from the Plains Camp, which only has about a 1 in 50 chance of occurring, and is the max amount of Obsidian I have ever seen be lootable there. Lastly, for your luck, you will need a top tier Shivaxi Monument rather than a standard Shivaxi Monument. From testing, only 1 in 50 Shivaxi Monuments will have all the loot we need for this run to be as smooth as possible. After spawning in 150 Shivaxi Monuments, only 3 of the monuments had a Fairy Ring, Dragon's Eye, Invincibility Pendant, and a Poison Stone. You only need the Poison Stone and Fairy Ring out of those 4 baubles, but a Dragon's Eye and Invincibility Pendant will help you quite a bit. Now, all of these coincidences is obviously asking for way too much, right? Yes, you are absolutely right. This is pretty much one of the most unrealistic scenarios imaginable. I, I will explain why. I calculated the chance of all of this happening. I use structure spawn rates found in the mod files and on the RLCraft wiki, personal testing by myself by spawning in 100 to 200 structures of the same type to calculate loot percentages, as well as using a biome rarity scale found on Minecraft's wiki for the majority of my calculations. The chances of all these structures appearing at our spawn and having the loot we want for this run is an insane 1 in 81 decillion chance. This number already seems insane just by looking at it, but let me paint a picture so you can better understand how big this number really is. For reference, there are only 18.4 quintillion Minecraft seeds. Statistically speaking, that means that there is only a 1 in 4.4 quadrillion statistical chance that this spawn luck can even occur. If that 1 in quadrillion chance is met, there is still a 1 in 18.4 quintillion chance for you to find the seed the luck exists on. In RLCraft, you spawn at a random spot within 10,000 blocks from 0, 0, but I already took that into account with my calculations. In other words, this structural occurrence is more common, but you spawning at this coincidence is the 1 in 81 decillion chance. So there is a 1 in 81 decillion chance of spawning at this occurrence, but we can't stop there. There is still the calculation of luck to look at. From information found on the Arlcraft Wiki's Enchantment Rarity Scaling page, enchantment books are classified as common, neutral, rare, or very rare. By adding all enchantments to a table based on their rarity, I managed to calculate that a librarian selling a Supreme Sharpness 4 or 5 book is a 1 in 192 chance of occurring. For a librarian to sell Swifter Slashes 4 or 5, we have a 1 in 64 chance. For a librarian to sell advanced protection for, we have a 1 in 128 chance. Now, the odds of both of these villagers being librarians, and these librarians selling these three particular books in total though, is extremely rare. The odds of the two librarians found at my first starting library selling these three enchantments is a whopping 1 in 3.1 million chance. The chances of you finding the enchantments in Venom 3, Natural Blocking 3, and Viper 5 in the library chests is a whopping 1 in 2 million chance. Multiply these two odds together and you will have a 1 in 6.5 trillion chance of this library occurring naturally. That alone is 6 times more rare than an end portal having 12 eyes in it. Now multiply that 6.5 trillion number for our perfect library with our 1 in 81 decillion chance, we have a 1 in th this number. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to reset 538 quatuor decillion times for this particular run, but if you plan to, I've got you covered. I did the calculations and it would personally take me over 529 duo decillion years to reset this amount of time. To make this number easier to understand, our universe is around 13.8 billion years old. I would need to reset for 38 trillion times longer than the entire age of our universe. 
and then I would need to do that all over again. One quintillion times. World record, here I come. I believe speedrunning can certainly be ridiculous because of how much luck can impact a result, but fortunately I can conclude that nobody will ever get quite this lucky. Probably. Oh, and if you want to see my work as how I got all these numbers, I originally talked about all my reasoning for 12 minutes and showed my work. But I thought that was very boring when I watched it back, so I decided to not make you suffer through that. Regardless of whether I messed up my fractions or not because I'm not a mathematician, again, this video is just for fun. One mistake that I will elaborate on, however, is that command blocks are buggy in our Relcraft. Therefore, I did not have a way to spawn in a battle tower or a Lycanite dungeon. This made me have to build those structures by hand. Having no way to spawn in a tower golem though, I had to just pretend to cheese the tower. I didn't find it an issue, but it may trigger some. Anyways, with that, the setup explanation is now done. Hopefully this helps a few people with some nice knowledge about the mod pack and percentages of some things occurring in the world. I explained some of the things that I do in this run as well on stream, but I realized that I never really put in fluid progression gameplay in an edited format. I understand very well watching an 8 hour stream to be unrealistic, so hopefully this speedrun helps teach a few neat tricks to some people by watching what I do in it. The number one question that will be asked though I would say is about the fairy ring. Since that item hard carries the run, it's, n it's out of the question, it's the hard carry. Natural Blocking 3, Viper 5, A Poison Stone, and Invenom 3 certainly carry their weight, but without the Fairy Run, the run would take so much longer to complete. The Fairy Ring is a bobble that makes you small and hard to hit, as well as allowing you to travel rather fast while flying, as if you were in creative mode. This bobble can be found in three places as far as I know. Doom-like dungeons, Mega Battle Towers, and the Shivaxi Monument. Forest Strongholds and Four Tower Dungeons may also have the Fairy Ring, as I have seen similar loot drop there, but I myself have never found a Fairy Ring in either of those structures. Doom-like dungeons, however, have the ring fairly rarely, maybe one ring can be found every 20 dungeons or so. Mega Battle Towers have the ring a bit more commonly, maybe one every 10 Mega Battle Towers from my own experience. And lastly, the Shivaxi Monument seems to only have the ring once every 50 structures or so. But perhaps I am just unlucky since I hear some people say it is more common. If you want to know about the fairy ring a bit more in depth, I talk about it more in my Bobbles tier list video. Anyways, back to talking about the speedrun. One can make a point that perhaps this run could be even faster if you trade with a villager in the Ice City for another star and skip the Lycanite dungeon in its entirety. You would instead calculate the chance of two battle towers spawning in the proximity of your village and both of those towers giving you a large amount of diamonds. You would then just summon in a Crimson Epion and Lunar Gru with some obsidians and diamonds for example for your soul stones. This route does look faster to at least reach Rahalvart as Modi son of Malgalich, but it is impossible for our run and would actually be a bit slower. That is because of how structures spawn in our Relcraft. A Sanctuary of Admes and Palace of Erevith are structures of the same grade as our Shivaxi Monument. These structures will never naturally spawn right next to each other unless at the edge of a spawn quadrant. And since both structures spawn in different biomes, the chances of this happening is practically null. On top of this, each quadrant is about the same size as default rendered distance, and we already have our village next to a Lycanite dungeon at the edge of our spawn quadrant. Simply put, a Palace of Erebith or Sanctuary of Admies will not be able to spawn right next to our spawn, but instead it would need to be nearby outside our render distance as too many structures currently fill up our spawn chunks. The biggest filler against the possibility of a Sanctuary of Admies or Palace of Erebith being the Shivaxi Monument. Because of this, you would need to loop the Shivaxi Monument and then randomly move away from the monument in the opposite direction of the village, but no person under any circumstances would do this normally. Going for the village would be your number one priority as you do not even have wood yet. You would have no reason to believe that there would be hundreds of emerald blocks waiting for you in the other direction. Even if it was, you do not have the XP to be able to mine the emerald blocks since you do not have obsidian. 
grabbing the obsidian from the plains camp to trade with the villager in the ice city, and then go again going away from the unlooted village is even more unnatural. In theory, it would be a bit faster, but no person would naturally just do that. By that alternative run same logic, it would be as if a random speedrunner in vanilla Minecraft decided to throw a run by just randomly digging straight down on a world record potential seed right after getting their veds in a village, hoping that they would fall into a 12 eye end portal. Nobody would ever do that. Our run is indeed the fastest for a speedrunner who goes in blind and just goes where the wind takes them. I, in the speedrun, like I normally would, made as many treats for taming mounts as I could for example, and traded with the librarians normally, even though in theory I did not need to. In testing, I defeated Amalgalich, Asmodeus, and Raovart perfectly fine without Swifter Slashes, Supreme Sharpness, or Advanced Protection Dragon Armor. My Drymond armor was enough to defeat the bosses considering I had Envenomed and Viper on my rapier alongside a Poison Stone Bobble equipped. Trading with the librarians and needing the XP to put those enchantments on my gear slow my overall time down by about 90 seconds, but me as a player would trade with the librarians and make myself as strong as possible if the resources present themselves, and knowing myself I most likely would have been too afraid to fight the final bosses yet if I did not have these resources even though I would know that I could technically defeat the bosses. That is just me as a player though. Since I had the materials as well, I made Beast, Dragon, and Avian Treats. As you will see as the run continues though, things do not go as planned, but I do not falter. I also make a few mistakes throughout the run that cost me a minute or two overall, but I would say that I played pretty quick and smoothly considering. If I were to do the run again, I would maybe be able to go sub 40 minutes, but it wouldn't be as free flow since I would know exactly what to do even more so than I already did in this run, having done the run completely by that time. The last thing I will say before just letting you watch the run flow naturally is that I hope this run teaches a few people some things that speedrunners try to do in RLcraft and how difficult it is to speedrun RLcraft, and hopefully this opens the possibilities for yourself in your own playthroughs. You should learn from the few technical errors that I make, and I will leave notes on screen illustrating a few of the more important moments or blunders. With that though, I will let you watch freely until the conclusion as I do not have much else to say. Enjoy the run that I set up for myself in creative mode that can only be explained as the luckiest run imaginable for a free flow RL Craft speedrunner. Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities. I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach. Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watched me weep. I love everything. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush. And 
then hold your breath and feel the tension Devil's hide behind redemption Honesty is a one-way gate to hell I want to taste consumption Overthinking, oh, 
Hey again guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. I will say a few things before signing off. 
I will say that you could obviously beat the game faster if you were on the level of a pro speedrunner. I myself, as you saw, made quite a few mistakes. Also, from a theorycrafting lens, if you calculate the chance of critting every single attack at max swing damage efficiency, you could potentially shave off a little bit of time as well, but calculating that didn't seem too fun or too informational. It was already hard enough trying to make this run happen after all. And for the math, I researched everything by myself over the course of about two days, so since I did the research myself, there is sure to have been at least one mistake, but overall my calculations are certainly in the ballpark. If you want to see my spreadsheet, well, it looks like just a bunch of scattered numbers, and most of the important calculations were done straight on a calculator. Regardless though, I genuinely enjoyed making this video. I hope you learned at least one thing from this video gameplay wise, but I do understand that it is hard to think about gameplay while watching someone basically just mess around on a handcrafted pipe dream of a scenario. But uh, anyways, with that, I'm going to wrap it all up. Take care of yourselves and good luck out there. Buh bye bye